Welcome, everyone, to another Fish Report Live. Thanks for joining us. I'm Craig Fissinger. That is Ken Francis back in our sound room tonight. Ross is back this week sitting in for the vacationing TK. Heavy D's back there. We'll check in with them a little bit. Out in our Studio R, we've got Covey and Kearns. We're going to talk to them a little bit later. And, Ken, last week we tipped off the girls' high school basketball season. This week it's the boys. Yes, it is, Craig. Big show for our listeners tonight. Uh, we're going to talk some MAC football championship games coming up here this weekend. We're going to talk some girls' basketball coming up. And that season's already started, Craig. And really looking forward to talking Shelby County League boys' basketball. It's hard to believe, Craig, it's that time of the year that Shelby County League teams, they tip off a, a league action right off the bat here Friday night. And looking forward to going over to Farallon and talking to their four-year letterman, Drew, or three-year letterman, uh, senior Drew Brodigan. Now, he's been an instrumental part of that Farallon program, looking to become more instrumental this year, Craig, of course, with the loss of Nathan Lessing. So it's going to be fun to talk to him, hear what he has to say about Farallon Jet basketball, and uh, get his perspective on the upcoming season. Is it just me? Does it seem like there's a Brodigan on the Fairlawn team every year? Kind of like Rushi and the Francis and the Borchers and the Mon, and there's one of those every year, too. I but. think so. There's, there's a lot of Brodigans over there. Uh, great household name over there in Fairlawn. Uh, good athletes, and uh, Drew is, is, is not the exception, and uh, looking forward to talking to him tonight. Yeah, it should be a lot of fun, Ken. And before we get to all that, just like we do here every week on the show, we have our weekly poll question, and tonight's poll question appropriately has to do with boys basketball. Shelby County League boys basketball. Craig, we last last week who was going to win the girls? Girls League this year or this week, Craig, we're going to ask who is going to win the boys Shelby County League Championship. Of course, Rushi is the four-time defending league champion. Uh, this year, they're going to be at some stiff challenges, uh, but uh, Coach Conner's got himself another excellent team this year. So, who's going to win it? Uh, you got all seven schools there to pick from. Uh, let's uh, have our viewers uh, vote out there, and at the end of the show, we'll go back to the sound room and and see what our listeners have to say. Yeah, I'm looking forward to a, a, a good gear competition wise, and and. Uh, I know we talk a lot about Fort Laramie. We did last week a little bit, but I think it's going to be it's going to be a good one. You know, when you play everybody twice, it makes it awfully exciting. And yeah, if you're watching us on the Fish Report Live page on your computer or your phone right now, you can scroll down, answer tonight's poll question, and check the results. And if you're watching us on NK Telco Cable Television, Ross is going to have those results for you at the end of the show. And speaking of Ross, I want to go back to the sound room because uh, last week we we talked to him a little bit about a couple MAC teams playing in the state semis, Ross. And this week those same teams are playing again only this time in the state finals aren't they yeah you're right mary local is playing in their 12th trip to the state championship game they have nine titles and two runner-up finishes minster is playing in division seven and this is their fourth trip and they have two titles and one runner-up a uh, couple of other notes in division six mac team has been in the state championship game eight of the last nine years with six titles during that span the only year they didn't make the final game in d6 was 2013 a uh, member of the MAC has also made the Division 7 state championship game every year since D7 started in 2013. MAC teams are 3 and 1 in D7 state title games with wins coming from Marion Local in 2013 and 14 and four recovery in 2015. The only MAC loss came in 2016 when Minster lost to Warren JFK. One other note is MAC member Coolwater played in the previous eight Division 5 state championship games winning four titles. Coldwater moved to Division Six this year and lost to Marion Local in regional championship game. In other words, you've been, what you got to say is they, they've been dominating Divisions Five, Six, and Seven here for the last uh, last number of years, haven't they? Yep. You know some amazing stats there, and and, and they're, they're all very impressive with Minster and Marion Local, Craig. But the one that stands out the most to me is Coldwater. They've been in the state championship game eight years in a row. 
That's amazing. Can you imagine playing in the state basketball championship game eight years in a row? Yeah, unfortunately, I mean, they, amazing. They, they got moved to division and ran in a Marion local this yeah, year. Exactly. So uh, Otherwise, the they'd probably still be playing. So. Yeah. Well, what do you think? Good good stuff there, Ross. Thanks for that report. And, Ken, what do you think? Are you going to win a couple more state championships? They're, they're a little overdue right now, aren't they? Well, you know, I think they will, Craig. You know, the MAC hasn't won a state championship in four weeks. So <laughs> I, I would say, yeah, they're due to win a couple more. Uh, Marion Local, Minster, uh, I look for them both to bring home the uh, gold trophy this weekend. All right, good stuff there. Now uh, let's talk a little girls basketball. Like I said, we tipped things off last week. I know it's awfully early, but let's take a quick look at the SCAL standings and see where we're sitting at after week one. Well, you're right, Craig. It is awful early, but when you look at the top teams in the league, uh, you know it doesn't surprise me. Right off the bat, you see Bakken's Fort Lormy, and Rushi right there uh, all sitting undefeated on the season. Of course, uh, you know, I think Jackson Center, uh, they haven't played a league game yet, and I think Anna's going to be very good yet as well. But uh, uh, no surprise. There, the team you know that, that we talked about last week, uh, Bakken's and Fort Lormy, uh, both got a lot of recognition, and as well as Rushi. So, uh, all sitting undefeated right now at uh, two and zero apiece. Yeah, again, awful early, but uh, for a report on that, let's let's go out to Studio R. Can check in with Kobe and Kearns and guys. Want to know what you think after Week One of high school girls basketball, and maybe outside of the SCAL, what team uh, that you you saw maybe this past week might have impressed you. Well, the Rushi Raiders have started off very good after their district uh, champion team from last year. They started off 2-0 and with nice wins over House and Sydney. They have a lot of balanced scoring right now with Larissa Poling and Jenna Cardonier and others right now that are just clicking for the Raiders. They haven't missed a beat. Yeah, they're, they're four re- returning um, varsity players from last year's district championship team. You know, They're really unselfish with the ball, and they're using the players that are coming up from the JV team and that didn't see the court a lot and really showing them how it is to play on varsity and really being unselfish with the ball and having the points spread across the whole entire scoreboard. The well, Army Redskins, too, they held Anna to six points. They're playing really good defense, solid and aggressive, and their two sophomores, uh, Marissa Myring had 13 and Kennedy Gephardt at eight. Uh, Carlos Siegel's co- doing a real good coaching job right now. Yeah, I agree, Carla. She always, she always has she, any product that she gets. She always makes those girls play hard. And just two sophomores putting up numbers like that, you can only you can only imagine what they'll be like when they're seniors. You know, they'll be probably thousand point scores by the time. And you know, Carla, she'll use that to her advantage, having young girls like that building building around those girls and having a great have the great next three years with them. And going outside of Shelby County, I'm I'm impressed with the Minster girls putting up a 53-27 win Saturday over Jackson Center, the team that they lost to in the regional finals. You know, they're going to be firing on all cylinders with players like Ivy Wolf, who in her first varsity game scores 19 points against Kaleida, but then another solid game against Jackson. You have Courtney Pranger, the D1 commit to Xavier. You have Taylor Kogi, and you just have a whole bunch of assets and depth for Coach Wiss's team. Yeah, their first five, they're really tough. I know I know they've been playing well. I've heard a lot of good things about them, and both those Wolf girls, they really know how to play the ball. They've had double digits their first two games, and the way that they're playing, you know, you'll have to be a really good team. Defensively, they're great. They pick you up full man. They're they're active. They're great. And once they get their starting point guard back, they can even be better. And also, I'm going to have to look at Bakken's. Even though their first win last weekend was over Parkway, 1-0, still impressive. They won by about 20. But we haven't seen much yet from them. So uh, we'll see. They got, I know they got Paige Lane and Sarah Bergman uh, to lead their team. Yeah, I watched them a couple times last year, and those two, they were great in coming back off of an, a pretty impressive season last year. They can only be better and with the underclassmen. You know, they'll get them more involved and show them the way, show them the ropes, and I can see them having a great season. And this weekend, I'm looking forward to Rushi's matchup uh, at the Habitat of the Cat against Jackson Center. Uh, Raiders fell twice to the, the league uh, champions, Jackson Center. But I think the Raiders have the advantage, even though the Tigers are bringing back Olivia Clark and Kennedy Reese. I think the Raiders have the advantage here, and I think the Raiders will win Saturday. Yeah, I can agree with you on that. You know, Olivia Clark, she's the only really true scorer on that team. A lot of the girls that are playing around her didn't really see the court a lot on the varsity level because of all those great seniors that they graduated. So I can see the Raiders handling the, the catch pretty well as well. And that's all we have from Studio R. Back to you guys. All right, and thanks for that report, guys. Good stuff there. Kobe, I was uh, uh, interested to hear you mention Minster. Talked to a couple uh, 
people this past week that went to that Minster Jackson Center game, and, and uh, I've been hearing reports that Minster is going to be one tough team to beat. Those girls you mentioned, those players you mentioned, uh, going to be awfully good and, and, and a tough opponent for anyone, that's for sure. Well, Ken, let's let's talk a little boys basketball now, and we want to talk SCAL. All the boys all over Ohio tip things off on Friday night. You know, a couple SCAL games that uh, I want to talk about, but first of all, you know, I know we were looking forward to that that Fort Laramie and Anna game. Unfortunately, that's not going to happen. That mm-hmm. game has been postponed to January 23rd, but we still got Houston visiting Rushi. We've got uh, Fairlawn at Botkins in one non-league game. Jackson Center goes to Layman. But let's talk about those SCAL games, the Houston at Rushi, the Fairlawn at Botkins. Uh, you looking forward to those at all? Absolutely, Craig. You know, it's always great to see opening night. You know, you, you, you learn a lot of things about the teams, uh, you know, who's going to step up, uh, new players that have moved up from JV and things like that. So, uh, and, and Rushi's game Friday night will be no different. Uh, uh, you know, everybody's excited. And, uh, you know, Houston will be coming into town. Uh, Coach Cardiner, I know he's got his team ready. I've seen all the scrimmages this year. They, they've been playing very well. Uh, I'm sure Houston's been working extremely hard as well, Craig. And it's just going to be nice for these kids to tip it off officially in front of a big crowd. And uh, you get the pep band playing and the cheerleaders are out there. And and just adds a lot more excitement to it. So these kids have been beating each other up in practice now for about four or five weeks. And, and it's time now that uh, they get to take, uh, uh, take their talents and show everybody what they've worked so hard for. So it'll be a lot of fun. And, and really looking forward to it. Same thing for Fairlawn and, and Bakken. You know, I know both those classes got very strong freshman classes, Craig. It'll be interesting with those two teams to see which of the freshmen that they might move right into varsity action right off the bat. You know, that's that's a big step from junior high basketball to varsity basketball. But both teams got some big holes, uh, some big holes to fill in their roster from last year. So I wouldn't be surprised to see each team uh, have at least one, maybe two freshmen uh, on that varsity roster and get a lot of playing time on Friday night. I'm, I'm as interested as well, and I agree with you on that. Uh, I, I know both you and I, the whole crew, we're going to be in the CCN here at Rushi, the Claire C. Gymnasium, and mm-hmm. looking forward to that action there, the house in that Rushi game. And we'll be watching for reports on that Fairlawn at Bakken's game as well. But, Ken, outside the SAAL, let's step outside of there a little mm-hmm. bit. Any teams outside of the, the, the league that maybe you're interested in seeing? Well, Craig, you know, we talk a lot about the MAC, and so, so I'm going to steer a little bit away from the MAC. And there's a team, Craig, that uh, – just to the west of here, that I think is going to be pretty talented. I've seen them play last year, Craig. They're in the CCC, and that's the Ansonia Tigers. Mm. Uh, I'm pretty high on this team. I've seen them play last year. They had a couple starters not play against Rushi. But, boy, I'll tell you what, they had a lot of talent on that team, and I know they were all young. They were sophomores and juniors last year. So, they, they, you know, he's got a, a lot of players coming back. They're very well coached. I know they're going to have great-looking uniforms for sure over there. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so so that's a team right there, Craig, uh, early. Early preseason prediction, look for the Anzonia Tigers to be a very good basketball team and, and a team that, uh, you know, the, the, the town has been been needing for a long time. You know, a lot of times Ansonia has, has always been kind of a pushover team. But, boy, not this year. I'll tell you what, they got a lot of talent. Uh, watch out for the Tigers. Interesting call there, Ken. Uh, that's uh, uh, Rushi does play Ansonia, mm-hmm. so we'll get a chance to see them firsthand. I'm also interested in a CCC team as well, a team that Rushi won't see, but the Bethel Bees. Maybe not mm-hmm. as big of an upset pick. They won the CCC last year, but they bring back a lot of talent. You know, they got Caleb South, mm-hmm. who we know about. They've got another Brian Rose over that plays very well for them. They actually uh, host Larmy this year. Larmy mm-hmm. with a very tough schedule. They do host the Redskins over there. That'll be an interesting mm-hmm. uh, game to watch, a, a defending champ of the CCC against a team that many are predicting maybe to win the SCAL. So we'll see what the, how that goes, but that uh, should be an interesting game as well. Two teams in the CCC mm-hmm. that we both mm-hmm. like that mm-hmm. should be fun to watch this year. You know, and I think the CCC is going to be pretty strong this year. You talked about those two teams right there. Yeah, you can throw Arcanum in there. I know that they've got some talent coming back. I know they got a couple injuries that are going to slow them down a little bit. Franklin Monroe, I know, has got some pretty nice players over there as well. And uh, we'll see what happens with Tri Village. You know, they got a first year coach. They're a traditionally very strong program over there. So uh, CCC could be pretty good this year. All right, with that, we're going to take a short break, but stay right there. When we come back, we're going to talk some more SCAL basketball, including that interview with Fairlawn senior Drew Brodigan. Oh, 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 oh,
Welcome back to the second half of Fish Report Live. Before the break, we were talking a little boys basketball, SCA old boys basketball, and one team we were talking about is the Fairlawn Jets. I actually talked to Coach Tidwell over there earlier this week, and I said, Coach, we've been talking with you for the last two, three years about Nathan Lessing over there, you know, all the scoring he did. He's not there any longer, Coach. What what, what, what are you going to have? He says, Craig, I got a kid over here, he says, that's, that's a three-year letterman. He, he plays all the time. He said he's the hardest worker I got. He's Drew Brodigan, and uh, we're happy to have Drew live on the phone right now. Drew, welcome to Fish Report Live, and thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. Well, listen, uh, you know, one thing I love about the, the start of a, of a sports season, whether it's professional, whether it's collegiate, whether it's high school, is that, you know, my team, I always feel like I have hope for my team. Unfortunately, I'm a, I'm a Cincinnati Reds and a Cleveland Browns fan, but, <laughs> but I, I got to tell you, again, the start of every season, I'm excited, I'm, I'm ready to go, I I'm always have hope for my team. I, I want to get your perspective as a player, as a, especially as a senior coming in to the start of this sports season. What's your mentality coming into this year? Yeah, I mean, I'm really excited for the start of this basketball season. I've been waiting for this season ever since last season ended. I have high hopes for the season, as I know so do the rest of my teammates. I know a lot of people are already counting us out because uh, we lost so much talent from last year, but I really like our team. It definitely gives me even more motivation to prove all those people wrong and have a great and competitive season. All right, well, you mentioned losing some talent from last year. I believe you graduated a half a dozen seniors, and one of those guys we were just talking about before you came on air, that, of course, is Nathan Lessing over there. You know, let's talk about him for just a second. You know, outside of all the scoring he did for you, what, what are you going to miss most about him? Yeah, it'll be different this year. I remember playing with all those seniors ever since I was in, like, third grade. And uh, one of the main things I'll miss about Nathan is his relentless work effort. He was always in the gym, always getting better, no matter what, he was getting better. Hi, Drew. This is Ken Francis. And uh, um, when you when Coach Tidwell looks at the uh, uh, the offensive end of the floor this year, he's, he's obviously going to look for who's going to score for me. I'm sure you're going to have a big part of that. How has how have you had to adjust your game to, uh, say, increase your points per game from what was expected last year of maybe just five or six points per game this year to, to probably, uh, you know, 12 to 14 points per game. Uh, what, what have you had to work on and to adjust? Yeah, I'll, I'll be a part of replacing some of that scoring from last year. But I'm, we'll all have a play in the offense. We're trying to get everyone involved and get, really get the ball moving. And uh, I'm on the post, so I'll just be posting up. I've been trying to get Coach to let me play from two guard, but he always holds that three I missed my freshman year over my head. Well, I, I think uh, I think every post guy wants to step out and shoot the three every once in a while. So uh, <laughs> I, I, I agree with you there. I think you should have a free reign from out there, as far as I'm concerned. Hey, uh, let, let, let's talk. You know, we've been talking about Nathan Lessing a lot. He's obviously gone. Um, Bring us, uh, bring us up uh, to to you know what's going on with your roster now. Who 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 is all going to uh, uh, fill that uh, Fairlawn Jet varsity roster, and who are you looking for for to play a big role? Yeah, we have a really solid group of five seniors this season, including myself. Uh, Luke Hickman's one of those. He still has that great shot that really spreads the floor. 
We got DJ Graves. He's our point guard. He's really improved from last season. Uh, he's bringing the ball up and really getting us into our offense. We got Stephen Blanford. He's a really good defender and he's really quick and makes good, smart offensive plays. And then our final senior is Tyler Kelch, and uh, he's improved a lot and he's been playing really tough, rebounding, and he's got some post moves. We also got Homer Rosales. He's a junior. He's a really big post for us. He's doing good. And then we got a pair of freshmen, Skyler and Ashton Piper. Skyler's a great shooter, really spreads the floor, and can hit it from deep. And Ashton has a really nice shot, and he plays his heart out. He makes a lot of good plays on offense and defense for his hard work. Drew, let's talk about opening night. Uh, Friday night at Bakken's. Uh, the uh, Trojans, of course, they graduated a couple of nice players last year as well, uh, the Berkman boys. Um, what's it going to take for Fairlawn to get a win? What do you expect from Bakken's, and uh, what's the game plan going in over there? Yeah, I mean, our focus is just playing our pace, playing our game, and we'll just play good defense, and uh, we won't let Bakken's dictate anything. Hawkins plays extremely hard. They always have, and uh, we got to match that intensity. It's at their gym too, and we got some like fresh faces, so we'll have to settle down, play our game, and if we play our game, we'll come out on top. Hey Drew, you know we've talked a lot of former high school athletes on this show, and and you know we we often ask them what they remember most about their high school days, and it's funny because. A lot of times you don't hear about the wins or you don't hear about the points, but it's more about the fun and 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 uh, uh, you know the I guess some of the camaraderie they have with their teammates and and you know I, I want to ask you you know what's it going to be like for you or, or what kind of energy do you get from your fans? What, what's the Fairlawn crowd like for you playing in front of your for your school? Yeah, it's it's great playing in front of all those people. Uh, my classmates love going to the games, and our student section has a lot of fun dressing up and everything, and it gets loud. Our community loves the games, too. They've been asking me for months about how the team's going to be at church and everything. And they're really excited, and they're ready to come support us. All right, and speaking of being a senior, one last question for you, Drew. Any plans for after high school yet? Yeah, um, I really want to go to the Cincinnati University and get my master's in occupational therapy. Nice. Bearcats. they got a big game Saturday, too, don't they? Yep. So, Crosstown Shootout. Well, listen, uh, Drew, I appreciate uh, you being on our show with us tonight. Apologize for the technical difficulties we had uh, earlier in the show there. Uh, but from uh, Craig and I and uh, the sound room, Heavy D and TK and Ross back there, uh, best of luck this year. And uh, we'll look forward to seeing you play when, uh, when you take on the Rushi Raiders. Yep. Thanks for having me. Thanks, Drew. All right, that was Fairlawn star Drew Brodigan. And you're right, Ken, we'll be seeing him soon enough, that's for sure. I want to uh, get back to the sound room before we close things out tonight and, and check in with Heavy D. Heavy D, I know this is a sports talk show, but the heck with sports. I want to talk about this thing over in Ansonia going on called the Queen of Hearts Contest. I know you know all about it, so what, what what's going on with this? Boy, it's crazy. I'll tell you what, it's a lot of fun going on in Ansonia right now. Um, for about the, I've been going with you guys for about the last three months. Uh, they play the, the Queen of Hearts game. You, you you pay your money, you get your tickets, and if they pull your ticket out of about 15 million tickets in the big tub, <laughs> then you get a chance to uh, pick the, one of the hidden cards, and if it's the Queen of Hearts, you win the pot. So uh, it's down to eight cards. Tomorrow night in Ansonia, they're going to pull all the cards until uh, the big winner's found, and it's going to be a big pot. I'm thinking roughly $500,000 to the winner. A uh, winner gets 80% of that. And uh, not only that, but uh, the side bet is the 50-50. Last week, the 50-50 take-home was $42,000. Oh, my. A yeah. uh, young lady from Covington, I believe, brought that home last week. Um, so I, I expect that to be uh, over $50,000, enough to put Ross in a pretty nice car <laughs> if he should so happen to have his dad win that. But uh, we're going to be out there again tonight or tomorrow night. Hopefully it doesn't rain. And we'll see who takes home the big money. Well, I'm in on it. I know I'm in on it. I'm not sure. I'm you know, that we got about 10, 20 people, something like that. I'm not sure how many times I got to split it, but uh, yeah, yeah if, if we hit, I, I, I know I'll, I'll be, uh, I'll be sitting pretty good. If we I hit, think. I think you'll be back to even. We'll, we'll get. We'll, yeah, we, <laughs> I might be able to afford a, a little bit more equipment too, something to fix our phones, perhaps. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> 
All right, great stuff there, guys. Thanks for that. Hang in there, though. One more thing to get to, and that is tonight's poll question. Ken, why don't you read that to our viewers one more time? All righty. We asked our viewers out there tonight, which of the Shelby County League teams do you feel will be crowned Shelby County Athletic League basketball champion this year in boys basketball? Uh, Let's go back to Ross and see what our viewers uh, have to say. Yeah, well, majority of the votes with 55% go to Fairlawn, 36% goes to Lormy, and 9% goes to Rushi. Isn't that usually how it works? Whoever we have on as a guest, they seem to win. Yeah, that's the way it goes. But uh, I think our viewers, uh, those, that's three great choices right there, and, and they very well could be right. But uh, uh, I'm surprised the Anna Rockets didn't get any uh, plays there, but uh, must not have many Anna viewers tonight. So. Not tonight. All right, uh, great stuff there, guys. And uh, with that, we'll wrap up tonight's show. We do want to say special thanks to Drew Brogan for joining us live tonight. Ken and I and the crew will all be back again next week, same time, same place, talking some more hoops. Until then, have a great rest of the week, and good night, everyone. Bed, don't need no pull when you tune in to the fish report. Hey.